We're moving straight up to the next presentation, um, which is Truth in a Time of Crisis, uh, Data Science in a Global Pandemic. This is going to be brought to us by Joe McClintock, who is the Senior Director of Global Marketing and Brand at Skyscanner. So over to you, Joe. Good morning. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. And uh, I'm on a, a bit of a, a tight, um, tight time schedule here um, with you guys. So I'll give you a whistle stop stop whistle to, uh, stop talk. Get my teeth back in um, of how we've how we've really used data science to help us with this pandemic. Um, in in all honesty, travel brands obviously have been one of the most um, impacted brands um, or sectors within uh, the COVID crisis. And we faced an emotional journey, one of panic, grief, acceptance, and hope. And, and we've managed that brilliantly um, through, through the use of data science. And I'm going to talk, you, talk to you about that today. Um, last year, I stood on this stage. Um, now I'm in my spare bedroom at a desk, um, uh, like no, you know, undoubtedly most of you. But I really sort of enforced this idea of how our values um, are everything that we we um, believe in and everything that we do, and we've really tested them out this year. And by God, have they delivered? Um, you know, those values to us are our DNA. Um, we think we work. Our mantra is traveler first, partner second, skyscanner third. So we always put the traveler first. We see revenue as a lagging indicator of, uh, indicator of success even now when, you know, ultimately the travel sector has, has pretty much been decimated. So um, let's go back to March. Um, the travel industry sort of halted and sprung into action simultaneously. Governments took control. Um, all but essential travel was stopped. Um, no doubt, you know, many of you had, many of your travel plans uh, stopped also. And, you know, we saw a 76% uh, one-way search um, increase uh, uh, year on year. And ultimately, people were, were scrabbling to get home. At the same time, 7.1 billion people were living with border restrictions, and about 39% of people lived with borders completely closed um, to sort of non-citizens non -citizens and non-residents. Huge, huge um, stop in, in the travel and the um, migration of people. And at that time, um, our job was to really um, do what we've always done, um, demystify things for people. Uh, we were founded back in the early 2000s uh, to demystify all the complex variables when it comes to travel. And it was our job to do it again, um, but with a hugely different set of variables um, and actually crucially where people's health was at risk. So we felt a huge duty of care and a huge responsibility to make sure that we did that brilliantly for our travellers and, and the public. Um, and, you know, as a business, we had to pivot really, really um, quickly um, and frequently, still pivoting now. Um, and, you know, everyone loves a friend's uh, giphy here. But, um, you know, all joking aside, uh, our teams rallied round. We um, ultimately lent into user satisfaction, making sure that we could help travellers with all their queries, their flight changes, their bookings, all these, uh, you know, relevant things that people were experiencing. But equally, the Skyscanner marketing team had to really step in um, and lead the company through this crisis, lead the company to keep talking to our travellers, to keep engaging them, to keep supporting them and live our values when we couldn't talk or sell about tra sell travel anymore. How do we do that? Well, um, wonderfully and beautifully um, with the use of data science um, and user research. We actually, actually have a, a, a doctor of behavioural science within our business, um, but a team across marketing, uh, data science, user research and design came together and we created a, um, a tool which we called Aurora, um, somewhat organically, but to help us really break down the complexities that, that COVID brought to our category and to consumers. So Aurora, what is it? Um, so uh, in the reaction to COVID, as I said, we built um, a data science tool with over 3,000 data points from Skyscanner and external data. It's somewhat of a brain, um, but also a guiding light that permeates everything that we do. Um, here it is, just a little uh, visualization of um, the tool itself. But ultimately, we took um, 
data such as the John Hopkins government policies are from over 180 countries on 18 key economic and social indicators, travel demand with multiple measurements, traveler sentiment. Uh, we did a weekly survey of thousands across the globe and over a quarter of a million have par participated since March. And we use this brain, as it were, to guide everything that we did. Data science became our real um, shining light through, through everything we did in this crisis. Um, but not only did we use that data brain to continually monitor everything we did, we also used our human intuition. We're all tra travelers, we all feel things, but you know, every time we you know, experience something new or a new data point, we very quickly um, asked ourselves and our travelers the hard questions that we needed to. And the questions that they were asking were, can I go somewhere? Can I go safely? What can I do? Well, actually, booking horizons massively change. People ended up uh, booking things one week, two days, three days, seven weeks at the, at, the, at the most in advance. And actually, you know, when things opened up, we saw huge spikes um, in searches and traffic. So, for example, when Portugal opened up in the travel corridor list, we saw an increase of 2,000% immediately. Um, we provided great content that ensured that we delivered millions of unpaid sessions to our site, but actually more, more, more than ever helped our travellers through this crisis. Um, people ask, well, will we ever travel again? Um, and, you know, ultimately our job was to make sure that we helped them think about the things that they could do. So we provided many different things across social media, content, as I said, UGC, to help people still dream and still feel what was possible when it came to travel. Our social media engagement hit 14% across many of this. Um, and, you know, travelers were also asking, you know, is it safe? Like one is the one of the biggest questions and, and you know, the biggest variables that we faced was not, you know, how cheap is it to fly, which is what we were previously faced with, um, or how, how do I get there the quickest? How, like, how can I be safe? How can I make sure my family's safe? Well, for us, the, the one of the key things that we, we did was actually bring in some search variables for people. We introduced flexible tickets. So for peace of mind, if you wanted to change your, your flights, so people could actually search and book on fares that way. We introduced a number of safety and hygiene ratings. So fast face masks, enhanced cleaning routines, um, you know, things that actually help people make positive decisions. And our expertise. So um, our expertise, we brought in um, a, a new world of travel report where we were able to share with the media, our partners and the, and the world, what was happening and you know, what they could expect. Um, our partners equally were, were not missed out on this. You know, we, we couldn't actually make sure that people could do some form of travel without that ability to take flights um, and, and um, bring car hire to us for, for those staycations. So during this pandemic, we found, you know, helped 100, 000, uh, over 100 partners across the sector. And, you know, in all honesty, let's, let's, be, let's be real, travel is never going to be the same again. Um, but it has never mattered more. And I really believe that, you know, un undoubtedly we will get back to travel. And when we do, it will be, you know, wonderful. It will be tremendous. We've all faced an existential crisis. And ultimately, you know, we believe that Skyscanner is, is, is best placed to help people through that crisis and that we all do this in, together in, in a beautiful way. Um, I'm rushing through these slides uh, very much because we're on a, a short time uh, time horizon, but um, I'm going to hand it back to um, the guys at Madfest because uh, we're out of time now and I think we're out of time for questions as well. But please ping me on LinkedIn if you if you want to hear anything. Thank you, Joe. Um, actually, fortunately, we just have enough time for a couple of questions. So, oh, okay. so uh, we're chopping and changing. Um, thank you so no much worries. for that. Um, I think it's great to hear such a positive story from the travel sector. Um, I love how you talked about marketing and data leading at the board table at this time. C could you maybe talk about how the spotlight and or, or the ask has changed uh, of marketing during this period? Yeah, I think there's two two asks. One is actually, you know, how do we keep talking to people and, and what do we say? So we're not tone deaf. Um, we really lean into how they're thinking and feeling because there is such, you know, high anxiety, but high optimism too. So we're very much at the table steering that conversation. Um, and then the second is bringing the insight. So, you know, as the voice of the customer, 
we bring that information about how people are thinking and feeling, how they're behaving and how they're looking to behave. That for me has flipped us from being a product-led business to a brand-led business um, pretty much overnight. Uh, so we are helping steer the conversation with um, you know, product strategy through to design experience strategy yeah. through to how we communicate. Brilliant. And I think, I think that's a great learning for a lot of people. And you, you may have alluded to it in that answer, but w- what has changed that you think will continue once we get out of this crisis, like what learnings have you taken that probably will just change the way Skyscanner uses marketing in the future? Um, so we've always said we're traveler first, but actually the level and depth that we, we need to go to and continue to go to to learn um, is, is, is you know, continuous. And we need to keep developing that and asking ourselves really, really hard questions. The second thing is being highly adaptable to a a really volatile changing environment. Um, That's not going away. Um, And our job is to continue to think the customer and the environment and serve it as quickly as possible. Yeah. And given you've obviously taken lots of different data points from different places, like, do you, do you, how, how is the business thinking about at what point next year, there may start to be a slow kind of recovery for the travel industry? Yeah, we're actually already seeing some really positive signs um, towards sort of like summertime next year, um, you know, and we're continually seeing trends uh, when we see corridors opening up. You know, I mentioned the 2000% to Portugal. Um, so, you know, who knows what is around the corner? I, I really, truly hope that, you know, all the predictions we've got as a as a nation, as a world, um, you know, really play out so that people can get back to some level of normality and safety and safely. Um, as quickly as possible but yeah next summer we're seeing some really positive uh, trends excellent well I think that's what we wanted to hear that we might have yeah. uh, some holiday next year I know. so <laughs> thank you so much Joe. we really appreciate your time no worries thank you take care